And I know the Panthers are 0-5, and they are headed to Miami. <laughs> oh, man, that should be fun. Uh, hopefully they'll avoid going 0-6. But if they don't win that one, they have three games coming after the off week. I'd call it the bye, but only good teams get buys. And they are home to the Texans and the Colts, right? I don't know when the next win is coming or the first win is coming. I don't. I, I thought maybe the Colts, but now I'm questioning that even. I have serious doubts about any progress being shown, real, like significant progress being shown over the course of the rest of the season. And I'm telling you, when I make a list of the problems, Bryce Young is not on the list. He is not the problem. But they have a lot of them. Uh, To the point where, if I were Scott Fitterer, I would blow it up. I would make a list. Who who are the assets here? And I would be moving my assets with one or actually two exceptions. One is Bryce Young. Yeah. And the other is Derek Brown. And I would even consider that because I think it needs a complete teardown. Yeah, I'm ready for them to move some assets I re- too. I really believe it <laughs> it it we All are at them. the point where it needs a complete teardown. Will Brinson, senior NFL writer, CBSSports.com, Pick 6 podcast moderator. Uh, how off base am I about the Panthers? Well, I mean, your assertion here, I believe, if I'm understanding correctly, is that they need to tear it down and start all over. Um, yeah, I, we're getting to the other part of that problem, too. They're 0-5, so <laughs> I'm not sure how much further you want to tear it down. I think the biggest problem, and I like... I think people are questioning whether or not Bryce Young is the guy. I think it's tough to answer that question given the protection the offensive line provides him and given the weapons that he has at his like uh, you know at his ready. Like Adam Thielen is a really Adam Thielen's going to be in the Pro Bowl this year. Yeah, because he's he's because he's getting thirteen targets a week from Bryce Young. Yep, and there's no one else to throw to in Carolina. Yep, going to catch one hundred and twenty passes if he stays healthy. Yeah, I mean like I, I. But here's the thing is what's going to happen if the Panthers continue on this path. And as we, as I think you and Victoria were just talking about, they're at Miami in week six. I mean, that's a loss. (laughs) It's any given Sunday, but yes, of course it is. No, I'm look, look, they're they're all professionals. So stupid things happen. Buffalo lost to the jets who refused to throw the ball in week one. Fair. fair. So I'm just just saying saying it's, but yes, of course it's going to be a loss. I mean, like I haven't even looked at the line for this game, but I'm assuming it's going to be substantial, um, <laughs> right? Well, let me see. It's let me uh, see the line. I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it. Go through, uh, your, uh, go 14, through your thoughts. Fourteen. The offense minus fourteen. What? So, like, let's say you lose that game, and then you fall to zero and six. You go Is that to a your first bye. half line. I know, right? <laughs> the Dolphins look like a pretty good bet. Uh, you go into your bye. You're at home against Houston, a team that looks a lot better than people thought. You're at home against Indy. I think they probably get one of those. You really need to, like, you wait, can't wait, wait, overs- wait. You think they probably get one of those? Yeah, I mean, they're not going to lose every game this season. They probably get one of those. Houston, Indy. Houston, okay. Indy, Indy. Indianapolis likely going to be without Anthony Richardson for a while. Yes. Um, at Chicago, you, I can't overstate how badly the, the Panthers need to win that game. Because the Panthers really don't at need Chicago. The, the Bears <laughs> to... The Panthers... Re- Here's the biggest issue for the Panthers right now, in my opinion, is not the roster, it's not the quarterback, it's not the coach... It's not the 0 and 5 record. It is the fact that as of right now, Carolina will be handing the number one overall pick yep. to the Chicago Bears. Excuse me, in a historically potentially deep draft with Caleb Williams, basically a Trevor Lawrence, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning type of quarterback coming out of the draft. If he is perceived to be that, if he is really going to be that guy, and they hand the number one overall pick right now, the Panthers would have given up essentially. Caleb Williams, if if the season is right, today. Caleb Williams, DJ Moore, Jalen Carter, who looks like a superstar for the Eagles, absolutely number two picks for Bryce Young. No one in their right mind would make that trade. The Panthers right. believed that they would win seven plus games when they traded for Bryce Young. They haven't won any 
And they haven't. I mean, they were they were close against the Falcons kind of early. New Orleans. Oh no, was, that was. I think that was a game that they absolutely could have won, maybe should have won. Right. I mean, the game, game against the Falcons. They could have won, should have won. Yeah, could have beat New Orleans at home. But New, Atlanta's not that good. Atlanta's pretty good. Eh, they're all right. The Panthers stink. I'll tell you who's great. Bob and Ann Brinson. Bob and Ann Brinson won't stop texting me about the play calling <laughs> and how Frank Wright needs to get fired. I'm like, he's been there a okay. month, Dad. Stop it. But I think there's, I think there is justification to be critical and skeptical of the head yes. coach, right? So. I want to start at the top here. And normally, you and I, when we, although we didn't necessarily talk today, uh, but normally I try to leave the Panther stuff for before so mm -hmm. we can get to other things with you because there are other things worth talking about. But this is a, obviously a very big deal uh, to most of the people listening right now. Will Brinson, senior NFL writer, CBSSports.com, Pick 6 podcast moderator. The, the owner is still meddlesome impetuous and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt learning how to be a good owner. He has given us very little indication that he is making progress <laughs> in that regard. Right. The general manager, Scott Fitterer, who probably should have told the owner, um, boss, this isn't the draft to trade from nine to one. It That's doesn't, the crux. it That's doesn't the crux matter. Right it doesn't matter if Bryce Young is good or not. He is not the generational quarterback talent. Right. I, I still think he's going to be a very, very good starting quarterback in this league. One who could become a franchise quarterback. My problem is not Bryce Young. My problem is what you had to give up to go from 9 to 1, knowing because it wasn't that hard to look into the future and see Drake May and Caleb Williams, and as it turns out, a few other quarterbacks coming out in this draft where it was going to be so deep, you might not have had to trade up to get a franchise-type quarterback in this year's draft. But and well, and tag on the fact that you you were picking ninth overall. This is not a case of the Chiefs trading up to ten because Patrick Mahomes fell further than they thought and snagging him yeah. by trading away a future first round pick that they knew absolute like total worst case might be number fifteen overall because they had a really good team with Alex right. Smith. You know they they didn't even play Patrick Mahomes except for the final game in garbage. You know when they when they sat the starters in, in his rookie season. This is not the Bills winning nine games and going to the playoffs, and then trading up to 10 to get Josh Allen. This is the Panthers trading from 9 to 1. Yep. You had to give away so much to get up there, and you are, like, by doing it, and I think we all believe it was Tepper's idea to go up there and get it. it wasn't, this wasn't Frank Reich and Scott Fitter. Of course right? this not, is Tepper's, right. Yeah, Tepper's like, I want a quarterback. They say they've got a bunch of offers. Do make it happen. Let's go get this guy, because, damn it, we're going to be right, which mm -hmm. is not how being right works most of the time. And as a result, you have a roster – where the the defense has been playing well, but it's like mm. like they, they they played well early in the season, and now it's sort of like I mean a little bit of like maybe like you know like NC State and Louisville like we talked about last week, where it's like <laughs> you know you just you're like what else what what else can we do here, man? Like we held on for dear life. Now they're not playing well. They got blasted by Detroit. Yeah. Minnesota moved the ball pretty easily. They had they the did. pick six as the only way they scored. The offense can't do anything. It is a dink and dunk low vo like. Like there is no like the it is the least threatening offense in the entire NFL, and that's where I think the the criticism of Frank Wright of comes, Wright comes in. Yeah, for sure. Because I think I I hate to use this, but lessons can be learned from what the Jets did last week. I said it last Monday that the Jets have decided, and bless their hearts for doing it. For the most part, I didn't see uh, the game against the Browns. Was not on here, and I didn't care enough to try to seek it out elsewhere. I'm not a Sunday ticket person. Um, but in the game against, who did we just watch against the Chiefs? They were willing to just say, you know what? We're going to let Zach throw it. We're going to let him throw the ball yeah. down the field because if we don't, then nothing else is going to work. Yeah, Bre no, Brees, Hall, Brees Hall ran for 177 Brees, yards. And, Brees uh, Hall is a next level thing. Yeah, that's, that, that, was, that was really the uh, Holy the cow. He's yeah. averaging 7.2 yards a carry through, uh, through five weeks of the season. But the Panthers are Which going somehow to... isn't leading like the qualified rusher, <laughs> rushers because uh, Devin Ach Achan has uh, Achan has uh, he's averaging twelve point eight. It's unbelievable! Which is just I, the NFL is wild it's through. Great uh, through five weeks. him next week though. Don't don't worry. The Panthers will probably slow him. The, that Dolphins team 
By the way, this is the fastest team. They yeah. are like a dr- like a drug running speedboat <laughs> out of Miami. Like that is like the best analogy I can think of for that team based on the localized like like you know one of perfect those, like, for 80- the city too. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> one of those eighty cigarette boats. So it's like and like you got like uh, I don't know like, like something like something with like Scarface music or like Grand Theft Auto music playing in the background. Like um, you know like the heat is on. I mean even the heat is on is playing like some Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, shout out to Glenn, Glenn Frey. Um, Drug running like, speedboat. Uh, I just just leave yeah. it at your drug running speedboat. Uh, they're a drug running speedboat. They, they are, dude. They are so fast. If you go, um, if you look at next gen um, stats, and when you go there, you can you know you click you can you can check out the fastest ball carriers. Allow me to list the fastest five ball carriers on the season. Okay, Tyreek Hill, Devin A Chain or A Chan. Sorry, Whatever. Devin A Chan again. Tyreek Hill again. Raheem Mostert again. And then you still have Tyreek Hill, Devin A Chan, and uh, in inside the top ten. Uh, additionally, and I think there's a few more. Like it is it is Jalen Waddles on here. Tyreek Hill's on here again. I mean, it is it is yeah. littered with this Miami roster. Like the Panthers are going to get pantsed. Down in South, and, and watch the Panthers do something like wear their black uniforms down in the South Beach in like October too. Like, <laughs> no, they'll, uh, they'll wear uh, they'll wear they they should wear teal. Although who knows what the weather is like? Is it? But it if, ain't cold, right? <laughs> that's true. But if you're Frank Reich, you have to make teams defend the whole field, and they refuse they to do that. They can't. They, they don't physically. They cannot. They do not have anyone physically on the roster who can stretch the field. I, it, I don't think it matters. You have to. You have to at least but, show but, it. But, 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 you have I'm to show you, it. Like, if you don't no, show it, no, 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 then you, nobody's going to defend it. They literally can't show it. How like, you can't have like Adam Thielen's not going to torch somebody on a nine a vertical nine route. Like, I mean, DJ Chark's on the roster. Send him deep. Send your tight end deep over the middle. I mean, Hayden Hurst is a good enough tight end to at least get down the seam. They they have no choice. Because they're not good enough run blocking at this point. There's no great. I mean, Frank Reich uh, evoked the phrase "ground and pound" twice that I heard in his post game, and none of it really meant we're going to run the ball. Which I don't even understand why you would say "ground and pound" if you're not going to run the ball. They're just not good at it. On top of the fact that it's the second week that Miles Sanders has put the ball on the ground uh, and has really hurt them. Um, I, I, I believe I'm looking at this. Yeah, this is correct. Um, just look at the next gen stats passing charge for Bryce Young. Uh, congratulations, for the Panthers. He completed his uh, second pass on the season of 20 yards or more, air yards or more down the right. field against the uh, second one against the Lions. They, they just you just have to. You have to figure out a way to at least make the defense not put eight guys around the line of scrimmage to yeah. take away because all those short passes become impossible for Bryce Young, not just to complete, but to gain more than three yards if there's eight defenders around the line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah. and I mean, so, like literally, like, no, there's not a single team in the NFL that is scared of the Panthers. Nope. And, and them going up top. And I, if I recall correctly, like, you look at this passing chart from yesterday, and it is all inside 10 yards. Or behind I me, mean, he threw a he threw an, I mean he threw an interception on a screen pass too, by the way. Which and it was a great it was a great move by Aiden Hutchinson, give him credit, but still like ridiculous. It, but no, I mean, like, that was a ba- that was a bad idea. Bryce Young has to see yes. Hutchinson, but can we also say that if you it removed Aiden Hutchinson from the play, just lifted him up uh, with like a, a a pitchfork or something and got him out of there. He the pass probably hits Taylor Moten in the rear end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he got Although, blocked I, back sure into the play. Why are you lifting a human out of there with a pitchfork? I don't know. Like a crane or <laughs> I something. Meant, I <laughs> meant that. You saw for those <laughs> people watching, you saw I made the I made the like the yeah, the, yeah. the image of reaching down with a hook, a, cr- the candy, a claw. The, 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 the prize mind. claw. The prize Never, claw thing. Mind. It's the second yeah. time I've used the word pitchfork today. Was he, was he a bale of hay? You're just <laughs> tossing him out of there like a pitchfork. Hey, you know I understand all about bale of hay. All right, let Absolutely. me let, let me, me get to, let me get to a couple. That's right. You you also have uh, uh, horsemanship in your background. All right. Let right. me get to a couple. At least one other game. I I really sure. want to get to two. Um, would you consider what the San Francisco 49ers did to the Dallas Cowboys a statement? Oh yeah, that is that was a. I mean, like it was like a Sunday Sunday night. You can kind of stop. We we started we started our, we started the Pick Six podcast our live show um, in the third quarter. Like, yeah, like, it was that like, and we we, yep. we we usually wait till the end of the game, and we started because it was that bad. Um, it was San Francisco. It was sort of like if um, 
there's a club of elite NFC teams and Dallas like like was in the club mm-hmm. and San Francisco saw him and was like, what are you doing in here? Right. You know, you don't, you know, you're not a member. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, we, we got past you. Like, no, 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 no. You wait in line. Like everybody else picked him up by like the collar and threw him out the door. Like just bounced him out of the club. Like you don't belong in this club. It's us and the Eagles. And we're thinking about letting the lions in, but let me tell you something, Dallas, you don't belong here right now. That's what kind of statement game it was to me. It was it was thorough. Uh, the 49ers were amazing defensively. Dallas's defense, which, I mean, no Trayvon Diggs has, I think, matters, but it should not matter to the degree it did last night. But it was, I you know, you've heard me say this, your schedule matters. Who you play matters. And through the first what, four weeks of the season, Dallas had played four one and three teams. They hadn't played anybody yet. And they San still Francisco, haven't played. San Francisco any- hadn't really either, and then but they they but they had. But you know, they like, they had played better teams. I mean, Pittsburgh's yeah, not yeah. Pittsburgh's not a patsy. Uh I th- I still think the Rams are pretty good, right? Yeah, I do too. I uh, do too. So I mean the, the 49ers are I think they're by, the by best the way, team. By the way, in the Cardinals, the Cardinals and the 49ers have sort of figured out what to do. The Cardinals gave the blueprint for the 49ers, and then they you just run at Micah Parsons. You mm-hmm. you use your running game and attack Micah Parsons, force him to be a run defender. Don't let him be a guy who just flies off the edge constantly. And then you had that play action stuff that let you know Kittle's wide open on these these crossing routes. All right, one more thing, uh, maybe two. I will say, um, sure. the uh, the Jets won their Super Bowl <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Uh, they beat the Denver Broncos, who were coached by was it? Sh- oh, Sean Payton is the coach yeah. of the Broncos. And you so, nailed this one. Well, he, worse coaching job than, than Nathaniel Hackett. It, I mean, it's find a lie at this point, find, right? Look, I understand that you got to pump up your guy, and Sean Payton takes over the Broncos, and Russell Wilson is his guy. But when you go and you and the, he, I don't think, know that he was wrong. Nathaniel Hackett did a horrible job last year. For but sure. one coach blatantly and pointedly calling out another coach and then going about the business of calling out the Jets as an organization for what they did in the offseason just opened the door. And Peyton's only win this year is a frantic, miracle comeback on their own field against the Bears. Yep. And I'm sorry, but yesterday was freaking delicious. I don't even care about the Jets. I am more about Sean Payton. You have to back up your words. And he got them shoved down his throat, and I could not be more thrilled. It's yeah, you know, I think it's fascinating that the like the uh, modern not like the but like the modern social media like response is it, just like totally different than it used to be. Now it's like anything like LeBron related. It's like, or like Patrick, people, people in the comments will be like, if Patrick Mahomes does something, they'll be like, he's washed. And like, he's a loser. It's like, <laughs> like, they're just complete trolling. But like every single person in like responding to anything Broncos related is like, Drew Brees made this clown, you know? And like, and like, I don't know if they're being serious maybe. or not, but he I mean, might have. Maybe, 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 I mean, this is a really bad start to the Sean Payton era in Denver. And um, I don't know how you can. I mean, it it seems like to me there's an obvious scapegoat, and his name is Russ Wilson. <laughs> like, well, that's, yeah, that's... I do think that we're we're almost at the point, and I'm not even saying that Sean Sean Payton might not be right. Uh, if maybe Russ is done, I, we don't we don't know. He certainly wasn't good last year, right? I mean, and Sean Sean Payton's in the running for Caleb Williams. Yeah, he is. That's right. Oh, and uh, there's no question that he would draft a quarterback one uh, and move on from Russ. Hey, Panthers. I'm sh- 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 kidding uh sort of um real quick I mean, the current draft order is chicago chicago denver minnesota new england hello <laughs> chicago chicago uh-huh. <laughs> sorry um is bill belichick about to be done in new england i mean there's just no turning this Pat- patriots team around i don't think like they don't they have the they can't win from behind they can't win unless the gr- ground game is working they average 2.5 yards per carry against the Saints. I mean, the Saints team hadn't scored 30 points since week seven of last year. And they go into New England and give Bill, Bill Belichick before. Uh, so in the last two weeks, he had, so in his career as a Patriots coach, he has four losses by 30 plus points. Mm-hmm. 
one in 2003 to the Bills, one in 2020 to the Bills post Tom Brady, and two the last two weeks. He's been beaten. He's been outscored 69 to three the last two weeks. That is humiliating. Yep. And not nice. It's hard. Not nice. Exactly. Not nice. And it is hard to find a pathway More back nice. to this Patriots team being good. And I do sort of think you have to wonder: Is there like a chance that Bill Belichick and Bob Kraft, Robert Kraft? Huddle up at the end of this like disastrous year, and, and maybe this changes if they get a chance to draft like Caleb Williams or you know Drake May, and they decide to move on from Mac Jones. Um, but is there a chance they huddle up and say maybe we should mutually part ways? I mean, B- Bob Kraft wants him to break Don Shula's record in New England. Belichick wants to break it in New England. But at this pace, we're all, we're going to need like four more years to do it, and yeah. it would just be like I don't see how Belichick can continue to ride this out. And like with each Im- more embarrassing loss it becomes more easier and easier for anyone who's ever said that they won because of Tom Brady to just pound that gavel on the table even harder and like, and, 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 and make that point. Yeah. Look, um, this started to turn in the second half of the 19 season, the year after they won the Super Bowl. um, Mm -hmm. their offense was trash. Brady couldn't save it. They lost at home to Tennessee. The only time they've been in the playoffs since was last year. And they got beat by 30 points at Buffalo in the wild card game. Uh, and their their offense has just been awful. Mac Jones isn't any good. He's certainly not good enough to be a, a, a quarterback that helps you win. I mean, he could be the caretaker of a really good offense. But, man, they haven't had one of those uh, in now this is year five, year six. It's been a while I mean, they, since they, the Super Bowl. They, don't, they, they, they invested heavily in the running game, expected it to carry the team. They have no real weapons at wide receiver, nobody yep. that can threaten down the field, mostly young guys, mostly like pickups from like like uh, cast-offs from other teams. And they have a, a former Alabama uh, Heisman-winning quarterback who they drafted er- in the first round that isn't capable of lifting up the team. Sound familiar? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> the, the jury is not yet in on Bryce Young. Again, I think Bryce Young's going to be fine. Uh, I'm just saying that, like, but Bryce Young, like, I, I'm not saying that, like, Anthony Richards or C.J. Stroud would elevate what the Panthers have. I'm just saying that, like, the both those offenses, those offenses, like, if, I wouldn't want to watch a Patriots-Panthers game. That is a snooze. Oh, yeah, that would be ugly. They uh, Let's hope they're not scheduled to play. I don't think they are. Uh, Will Brinson, uh, at Will Brinson on Twitter, Pick 6 Podcast. You're the man. I appreciate your time. Uh, have a wonderful week, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, sounds good. See you, man. All right, man.